Hello, Brian Knowlton back with another super cool slide rule tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn the sequence of operation of a defrost heat pump board. A defrost heat pump board, this one's a carrier, this one here is manufactured by ICM, functions pretty much exactly the same. What we have is we have our thermostat wires in, we have these are our incoming thermostat wires. These wires go out to control the different components of the heat pump. No matter what board you're using, they're almost all identical. We have an R, a C, an O, a Y, and a W. The R is going to be our 24 volts that is supplied to the defrost board at all times. C is our common. O controls the operation of the reversing valve. Y controls the operation of the compressor contactor. And W is a terminal that is energized whenever the unit goes into a defrost, it turns on the emergency heat inside. Now, this board right here, these are the terminal designations. Now, we have a defrost thermostat, and uh, on this board, it's right here, DFT. A defrost thermostat, the purpose of this switch is to tell the board the uh, how long the unit has been running when the outdoor temperature is below 32 degrees. And I, I shouldn't say the outdoor temperature, that's actually the temperature of the condensing coil. So the, amp, the ambient temperature may actually be 45 degrees, and the, uh, but the condenser coil may be running at 30 degrees. And if that's the case, this will close the contacts and the board can count the amount of time that it runs. Uh, that time is important because every one of these boards will have defrost settings. This one has dip switches that you set to control how long it runs before it goes into defrost. And this one here uses a jumper right there that you can uh, manually change the time that it runs before it defrosts. Next we have pressure switches. Now if your unit does not have pressure switches, you would just jumper around this. Um, but here we could have a high side pressure switch, low side pressure switch. Doesn't really, really matter. If you didn't have these, you just have a jumper wire that went from here to here and from here to here. Uh, next, our terminals are the contactor uh, that controls, of course, your contactor, which is going to run your uh, compressor. And then on the very top on this one, we have the reversing valve. Um, now, on each one of these, uh, on this board, for instance, we would have to look at the wiring schematic diagram to figure out where, where the uh, appropriate wires for that are. The next thing we have is this right here. This is your condenser fan relay. On uh, this unit, it's right there. On this one, it's here. What this does, this controls the operation of the condenser fan. Um, when the unit goes into defrost, this relay is uh, not energized. So the condenser fan does not run while the unit is defrosting. A lot of times technicians will forget that uh, even on air conditioning that this relay must uh, transfer the power from line one to line two to, through the condenser fan. Now to test our board, if we were wondering if our board is not working properly, there's a little thing called speed up. So we don't have to sit there and allow it to run forever. If you want to test the board, this one's called speed up. Right here it's called test. You could jumper this out, jumper these wires out, and you're going to increase the, uh, the, the time by roughly 250 to 300 times. So normally, like for instance, if I have this one set for 60 minutes defrost time, and I speed it up, that's gonna be reduced to just you know seconds. And it will allow me to check the operation of my defrost board to ensure that everything is operating properly. This sums up the overview of a defrost heat pump, pump board, what it does and how it operates. Uh, please stay tuned while I introduce the super cool slide rule. It is the coolest tool in air conditioning. Thank you for watching. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Historically, technicians have carried four or five different slide rules. You have one for R22, one for R410A, one for metal duct sizing, one for flexible duct sizing, and yet others for diagnostics or troubleshooting. Thankfully, those days are gone. This one tool will allow you to charge a system with R22 or R410A and either the superheater subcooling method 
The back cover contains required formulas, it has capacitors rules and practices, a wet bulb conversion chart, how to perform computations on series or parallel circuits, an electric heat strip guide, a complete system troubleshooting diagnostic chart, and how to troubleshoot compressors in TXV. Inside is packed with even more information. It performs sizing of both metal and flexible duct. It has the only direct reading conversion from smooth metal to insulation line metal we've ever seen. The majority of technicians have never been taught that if the insulation is on the inside of the ductwork, you cannot size it with a regular duct calculator. It has step-by-step -step directions for determining airflow through a gas furnace, electric furnace, or an air conditioning unit. It has pressure drop multipliers for ductwork, as well as recommended velocities. And finally, the scanning of this QR code gives instant access to over 100 tutorials to assist the technician with every test and repair imaginable. You owe it to yourself, as well as your customers, to own this tool. It's less than $20, including shipping. The SuperCool will save you countless hours of frustration when troubleshooting units. Log on to our website and get one today, and I promise you will be a better technician tomorrow. And remember, every technician is only as good as their tools. Thanks for watching.